This week, Nelson and I interview Lenore Abazadadel, CEO of Nova Cigars, Platinum Nova Cigar. We get to hear about her experience of and journey to become CEO of, I think, a very, very talked about line of cigars here, especially if you follow them on social media in any of the forums. I'm sure Nelson has some news along the way for sure. Stogie Geeks episode 353 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote... Drew, who is remote over in Texas? Look at you. You got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to episode 353. I am your host of Stogie Geeks, Joe Hosempa, and joined in studio, we have the famous Nelson. What's up, Stogie Geeks? And Nelson and I have the opportunity to interview CEO of Platinum Nova Cigar, Lenore Abrazeradel. Welcome <laughs> to Stogie Geeks. Did I get it? Thank you. Thank Ab- you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Abzeradel, right? Ab- yeah. Abzeradel. It's Lights. perfect. Oh, <laughs> I got like a 74 on that one. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> I think it was an extra A a couple of times. <laughs> I try. I try. I try. Welcome to Stogie Geeks. It's a privilege and an honor to speak to you. Um, Nelson had reached out to you and previously to reaching out to you, I've noticed a ton of activity about you on social media about Nova Cigar. Uh, Nelson reached out to me and said, we should probably get her for an interview. And I was like, go for it, absolutely. So the stars aligned and here we are and welcome to Stogie Geeks. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad I'm in your show. Thank you so much, and Nelson, for reaching out to me. Um, I'm glad I'm going to share with you a little bit about my story, about my experience, and everybody going to know a little bit more about who is Leo, Leonora Saradel, behind the scene. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I've been following her for about a, a year now and, and, and Nova Cigars, and unfortunately for me, I, I think I told her when we were chatting online, I, I hadn't had a chance to purchase one. Mm. They don't have them here in the, in the New England area, at least that I found yet. Um, so it was nice to finally get one. Thank you for sending us some, some of your, your <laughs> products. And uh, I'm even more excited, honestly, just to talk to you. Like I said, I've been following you for a year, and, and you do great stuff online. You're a great Thank ambassador you. for Nova Cigars, no doubt. Yeah, and, and, a breath of, yes. and a breath of fresh air for the industry, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a crazy industry, right, uh, as we know. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of super cool people. Um, interesting point, just for the Stogie Geeks that are watching and listening, uh, I am smoking uh, the classic, right? And Nelson is smoking... 
Well, I finished the um, the Platinum Torpedo, and now I'm smoking a uh, Club Edition. I believe it's a Toro. Yep. I'm interested in, in, in I love the name, the uh, Sultan, right? <laughs> you know, and so we'll, we'll get a chance later on in the interview and kind of talk about the cigars uh, because, you know, they're, each side um, is its own blend. And, and, and I do want to share that note as the interview goes on after we talk about, you know, you and all of that and, and like, like, you know, um, what the Story Geeks can kind of go out and kind of search for these cigars. I mean, here in the Northeast, um, you know, uh, we, we, we got to get you into some shops for sure. We got to work on yes, that. I, I, believe me, when, like I just, when we start with Nova uh, about the shop, we will not be all over. We travel all over in 2019, but the, when everything happened with the COVID in 2020, it's like hit hard to us because now we don't have the opportunity to go door to door to show our cigars online and we start doing everything in zoom live that is the reason i'm really keep saying thank you so much for inviting me at least i have a space to talk a little bit not only about <laughs> myself uh, a little bit about no one that people can understand who we are mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm so excited to hear your story so so how did you get started like in the business and 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 take us through your journey you you've you've uh Definitely hosted at a couple of super cool names, right? Uh, uh, Club Macadudo in New York, right? I mean, you know, uh, the the um, the Nat Sherman Townhouse, right? And your Casa Monte Cristo. So, like, take us through that through through, through that whole journey, and then how okay, you, you ready? Uh, wait I'm a minute! Ready? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Let me. I'm gonna buckle up. up. I'm ready. I'm right. ready. We're all ready. <laughs> okay, no, it's, it's funny. Everything everything I start, I, I keep saying 10 years ago. Um, I'm, I'm original from Uruguay. I moved to United States 25 years ago. In one of the three to my father, I spent time with me in New York. He has smoked cigar all his life. And I'm looking for a place to go to smoke a cigar with my daddy. I never smoked cigars before. We talk about 10 years ago. And we go to Club Macanudo, New York City. Club Macanudo is part of General Cigar. Uh, I can say there, smoke my first cigar with my dad, my life changed. Mm. Because uh, now I, I'm feeling like me and my dad, I have something more in human to talk. Um, it's like a very special moment and connection. And my life is changed, and I completely feel in love with the cigar. I'm working before on the wine industry, and I just keep saying wine industry, cigar industry have a lot of similar things. Everything starts on the field, family business. It's a woman always involved, mom, grandma, daughter, sister. And it's very similar. We have to give you time to the great pick the correct grape to make the great wine, we have to do it exactly the same thing with the leaf. We have to just make sure the leaf is ready. The leaf is going to tell us when it's ready to be rolling. But anyway, everything I started in Macanudo, um, I start working on Macanudo um, like a hostess, just to be around the cigars. Next thing you know, I be a bartender, server, and I keep repeat from where I really am a star because I would love to the people understand. You never know what um, destiny you're gonna take if you're not starting somewhere. Uh, I'm working on Club Macanudo. I just the last year uh, I'm be assistant manager on the floor. Like in four years, I just really go up. <laughs> uh, next thing you know, I'm feeling day by day more in love with the cigar industry, and I'm decide uh, move on. I'm looking for another cigar store where I can learn it, not only myself, training my palate with different cigars on the industry. Uh, and I guess, thank God, I guess apply from Nat Sherman. Michael Hello gave me the opportunity. I'm start working on Nat Sherman um, around 13 uh, co-working men. And that is one of the funny things. Uh, nobody, 
never uh, let me feel like, oh my God, she's a woman, she don't know. Can respect my shop from the day one and on the top can uh, teach me to keep learning. And I'm feeling in love. I'm feeling in love with the different brands, the different tobacco, the, the different profile from each cigar. Uh, working on a chairman year, year and a half, again, the opportunity to come to my door and uh, have an offer position to run in both the store, New York City, Casa de Monte Cristo, Casa de Monte Cristo, assistant manager. Again, the life is push me to keep working on the cigar industry. And I just keep say, if you're working hard and you love what you do, you never know who is watching you. You never know. And I keep saying that because on the end, when I have the opportunity to work in Nova, is because someone see my work, my hard work for the last 10 years. Okay, working in Casa de Monte Cristo, Casa de Monte Cristo, um, buy a new store in Boca Raton, and I'm applied from relocation and I moved to Florida. Now I'm working in Casa de Monte Cristo in Florida. Um, working on Casa de Monte Cristo in Florida, um, the person, the family office behind Nova can already put the eyes on me. I can, can knows me from New York, from I'm the server, the hostess in Club Macanudo, and can see how hard I'm working to be right now, again, running another cigar store in Florida. Um, Hen keep, he can Hen keep saying that to me, when you're ready, we're ready. And I'm feeling myself like it's time to move on and just start my new journal in a new fresh company. Uh, many people tell me like, you crazy. Everybody knows you already, you're working in Casa de Monte Cristo, you're working on the big company. But you know, when you, I'm the kind of person I love the, somebody say to me, that is gonna be hard to make it. I'm gonna at least try because yeah. I put, Everything. I, I, I just put my passion. I put my hard work and I want to just show you to the world. I want to keep uh, not only working in the industry. I just want to share with everyone uh, my personal history and on the top, just keep put a new product on the table, uh, open the palette for more people. Uh, people sometimes are, con if I'm talking too much, let me know. I'm going to stop talking. No, <laughs> no this keep is great. going. <laughs> The only thing is, the more you talk, the more questions I have. So yeah, I'm building up a I'm list. I'm building up a list of questions, but it's all good. Keep going. <laughs> oh, okay. We might need a little bit more than an hour. How about an hour in, in, in 20 it's minutes? It's okay. okay. I take the day off. Uh, well, we uh, <laughs> hear that, Stogie Geeks, just for us. We all know that I have the gift yes. of gab. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, um, working on the, on the Nova Cigar... Um, the good part is we put um, a new blend, a new company, a new name to everybody upside to try. It's not about who is better. It's not about what figure is better, what company is better. It's about let the consumer try different blends, try different stuff. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I want to wait for your question. I don't want to just... Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, not for letting me speak. Thank you for that awesome <laughs> statement you just made. Let the consumer decide, right? It's like amazing how uh, some of the bigger classic facing companies try to... I don't want to say pigeonhole, but I guess you can say it. We say that here in the Northeast. You know, they're kind of like, you know, this is it. This is a... And, 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 and like... It's okay to smoke uh, uh, Monte Cristo, Nova, and someone else. It's okay. It's like, you know, when, when you go to your home, um, you know, uh, you, you buy Lysol or Febreze, and you use this different product, or this soap is this and that. You work, you know, you have babies, you have loves, pampers, and loves and pampers, and and all this stuff. I have a two a, a two year old, so I have to make the baby reference, right? And, and, and <laughs> you know, and, and and it's like you know, it's like you you work for what you want at the time. You know what I mean? Like, and I always get asked that question when I frequent a brick and mortar shop, and they're like, you know. What's your favorite stick? And I'm like, uh, Cuban, non-Cuban, Robusto. Uh, Gordo's not one of them, right? You know, I'll be talking you see size. That question? What is your preference stick? 
Yeah. I'm going to ask you, what is your profile? Yeah. What what kind of type of cigar you like? Exactly. I don't need the I I don't need you put uh, names behind the cigar because mm. uh, it's many good cigar we bring from Dominica, Nicaragua, Honduras, Costa Rica, San Andres from Mexico, and the only difference sometimes is the blend. Of course, we put a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that, but on then every cigar have the personal touch for every special moment. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's true. And it, <laughs> to use a cliche, you know, size doesn't matter, right? Sure. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> but it, it's true. Like Joe brings really? up. Really? Uh, um, Joe brings up a great point because I've asked people, you know, what do you like? And they're, oh, well, I like Coronas or I, I like Robustos. And it's like, well, every Robusto is different. Right? Uh-huh. Do you really like a Robusto, or do, you know what? <laughs> what? Right? What is that profile that you like? This, you're spot on. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with a, bru- a Robusto when we're making references to size. Size, but anyway, uh, you <laughs> got Coronas. <laughs> but, you know, next, but next, next question, right? But, no, um, I, I have, I have so many questions that are. We're going to go back in your story. You worked at all these places. You work with Mr. Herlotz and Nat Sherman and then Casa de Monte Cristo. It was a pre-COVID era, you know, when we could not wear masks and everyone's not a doctor. You know, everyone's a scientist on Facebook. Everyone's a scientist, a political science major, and, and a nurse all rolled up in one, right? And a doctor, right? But, like, like... What are some of the lessons about the industry that were taught to you? Because those are the questions. That's where if someone sits down with me and, and does an interview with me, and, and those are the types of questions that, that I like. Like, okay, yeah, I owned a cigar shop here in the Providence Metro. Uh, I was a rep. Uh, you know, I've, I've uh, had a, a cigar radio show, which was people would call in. I've done events because of the radio show and all of that stuff. So, but what are the lessons of the people that I've met? You know what I mean? So my question to you is, you know, you work at all these places. People see how hard you work and getting you, 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 you learn. But like, what are the lessons? Because I don't know about you. uh, Full disclosure. I keep a leather journal. I learn lessons every day. I write in the journal. It's not like a diary wish list. It's like, holy crap, I talked to that person. That was a freaking cool piece of knowledge that I could use, right? For either Stogie Geeks or for my business life or, or, or for, for work or, 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 or being a new father, right? You know, uh, anything. And I'm like, that's a good piece of knowledge that I'm going to use someday. So having that said, what's the good pieces of knowledge that you've learned before you even started Nova Cigars? Uh, I think that one of the piece uh, really important for me and changed completely my life is when I talk with everyone come to the cigar shop when I'm working on Nat Sherman or Casa de Monte Cristo and take time to listen and talk less. Mm. Because um, everybody, like I'm, I'm considering myself for from when I'm born a salesperson. And when I am start working on the cigar industry, I know I'm not want to be there to sell. I want to just be there to make new friends, new consumer. And to go to that level, I have to listen more. Uh, on size, talk about what I like, or mm. what I recommend, or what I have to push. I'm going to start listen how's the day of the... I spend more time. It's, mm. it's something like change completely. Uh, my day by day, because I remember uh, I'm gonna if something when I'm working in that chairman one day is one gentleman just come to the humidor and he said I want a cigar I want a cigar okay uh, what kind of type of cigar you like I just want a cigar and then I ask you how's your day I said why do you mean how's my day I said <laughs> <"What else?" laughs> I want a cigar <laughs> I said no I just want to ask you I just want to guess if your day is tough I don't want to just I'm win the rest of the day. I just want to make sure I recommend a good cigar for you. Mm. You really can enjoy. I calm down. Like, and that connection with everyone uh, changed my life because it's not about what I like. It's not about what I have to recommend. It's about listen and respect 
the time with consumers. Uh, that that is the most important part for me. On mm. I hope there's retailers listening to this. Oh, because there, that's, are, there are. That is spot on. Absolutely yeah. spot yes, on. It's, 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 I'm the old fashioned way. Uh, and I'm, I'm learning in my own because I see the way for, I be treated when, when I go to the different cigar lounge to buy my own cigar before everything. First, I'm a woman. She don't know about, like, you got, you, sometimes people go inside of the humidor and you already know, can don't gonna come to you and pretend you know. Hang on, yes, already. She's a woman. She don't know the way to smoke cigar, flavor cigar to this lady. And you know, you know, give me chance to talk. You already pushed me to that corner. Uh, yeah. And besides, I'm a woman. Like maybe a, a, a guy from 25 year old come from the humidor and he wanted the first cigar. What we have to recommend flavor cigar. What we don't take time to explain to him about the cigar line we carry. That is the thing, uh, working on the retails, working at, uh, believe me, all the time when I go to different cigar shop and I have opportunity to talk to a tobacconista guy inside or girl, it's something like, wow. It's sometimes people don't take time and every brand, not only the small brands, every, bar, every brand needs someone inside of the humidor take time to talk with the consumer, yes. to the new client, to the new friend, to the new part of the cigar family. Yep. And that is one of the things I've really learned. And now I'm not working on side of the humidor, but like if the people go to Vegas and see me on the show, sometimes it's a lie, or sometimes Leo, I wait for you. No, I just want to make sure I sell the correct cigar to your store. I don't want to just sell to sell. I just want to make sure in your store, the profile, like the profile client, like more full body cigar. I don't want to recommend you for you a Connecticut in my line because I want to sell to you. No, I just want to recommend a cigar. It's perfect to your store. It's, it, you know, lessen, lessen the consumer, lessen the friends, lessen the retail process. Lessen, when you listen more, learn more on the same time. That, that is me. So have you taken that knowledge now and to your current role? And, and if so, how are you doing that? Right. Cause you're not in the, you just said, right. You're not in the humidors anymore. So how are you taking that knowledge now and transitioning it to your current role? Okay. Uh, sometimes people, I guess, um, send me a text message on email and Instagram and say, I never tried your brand. I would love to try your brand. You can recommend cigar for me. I said, no problem. Tell me about what you like. And that, wow. I just, in my phone, in my message, in Instagram, I just try to dedicate part of my time to make sure if somebody want to open the doors to try a Nova, at least try the correct blend for you, <laughs> for him. That is the way, exactly the same thing when I'm in the, I'm sorry. That's okay. When I'm on the on the shows and it's people just come and ask me, Leo, I want to just carry our cigars in our cigar shop. Okay, tell me a little bit about your cigar shop. Not only the, the blends you must sell in your cigar uh, shop, the ring gauge, the size, the price point. And I just try to put myself in this in the owner position and recommend exactly what is going to be perfect for that store. Yeah, I will say, you know, I, like I said, I followed her for a year at least, and she definitely makes herself available and accessible to the consumer. So I, I think that's super great. And that's what differentiates you from a lot of other CEOs. <laughs> yeah. I'm believe me, I'm the most different one. I'm the, that is, uh, <laughs> You're the I happiest have the CEO. Page of Nova, like Leo is all the time, like, and then I have Cigar Blondie, like, uh, I want to show to everyone who is really Leo, who is yep. uh, Leo, not a CEO of Nova, but Leo is a normal person, enjoy every day. Sometimes she want to dress up, sometimes she want to be in jeans, short, smoke a cigar. And I'm here and I'm available to any question. And I'm open for good and bad feedback because another thing I'm a learner, especially in this industry, never take anything personal. Mm. Yes, keep going, keep learning, and just keep improve yourself for more more good things. Yeah, that's good advice. I I had my integrity questioned on this show uh, uh, multiple times because I said that you know a cigar company 
uh, all their press releases are just like uh, they like uh, steer news, but it's not like really news. You know what I mean? And and then they write a letter and say that I don't have integrity. It's like no, 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 no. You 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 don't understand. Like you know, and 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 you can't take it personal, right? Uh, I get that. I've had I've had I've interviewed a ton of people over the past three plus years that I've been here. I'm starting my fourth year here uh, at. Uh, Stogie Geeks, and you know, it, it's like, it's like, it it, 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 I try to improve every day. One of the techniques you say about li listening is like, that's a process that I'm going through as well. Like, even as I'm here hosting the show, uh, there have been multiple interviews where, like, I, I would like interrupt, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, I get excited or want to talk, and I'm trying to listen more, and that's a very good theme, and I think. With me over the past nine months, that has has uh, and and maybe it's fatherhood, maybe it's maturity. I don't know what it is, right? But it's like it it it, it it's helped a lot better getting to the real story with with people as well. And you can't take anything personal in 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 this industry because at the end of the day, we all let's just face it. We all uh, like to smoke a cigar and have a good time, right? And, and the same Jose time, we know Blanco, how to gold medal to everybody's gonna like you. Right. I don't pretend everybody like me. Right. But at least respect my job. Yep. Simple like that. It's yep. just simple. I went to a blending seminar with Jose Blanco, so I, I can't take credit for this line. But this is one of those times where I wrote in my journal, like, this is a great piece of advice. Jose Blanco says, and I quote, the worst thing about smoking a cigar is doing it next to an asshole. <laughs> like, you know, and I was like, that's genius. Like, you know what I mean? And, and the funny thing is, if you've ever met Jose, it's like he gets away with it, you know. Not that it's bad, but, you know, it's like, it's like he's right. Like, how many times have we sat down with someone, and it could be a, a, a family member at a barbecue, and it's like, dude, you're really ruining my cigar right now. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Or, or a, a, a patron, you know, who's had a bad day at the shop if, if you were, uh, you know, entertaining them and all that stuff. So it's just, it, and it's one of those quotes that I received back in 2015, and, and what, six years later, I'm still using it. It's stuck with you. It stuck with me forever. I was like, that's amazing. You know, and it's right. It's like you do have to listen more. You do have to listen to your consumers more, right? You do. And yep. you have to respect whatever the. That is another thing. Some, somebody, the people say, Leo, you know what? I know I like you. I tried this cigar. You know that like, I really don't like. And I say, perfect. Because you don't have to like all my cigars. You know, your palate have to like different kind of cigar. It's, it's okay. I don't take it personal. I don't pretend. Uh, people just only like, or if he's gonna be honest with me, I say, really, I really don't like that cigar. Yes, it's good. I understand. This means the cigar is not bad. This means you don't like this type of tobacco, right. this type of blend, and I respect that. I just try to be clear in that part. No, because you don't like the cigar, this means the cigar is bad. Mm. Yes, everybody listen over there. Just make sure we clear in that part. You if you don't like the cigar, make sure if somebody gonna try the cigar, don't say, oh, that cigar is, is uh, I di really don't like that cigar. That cigar is bad. Because you don't know and you already put this thing on the mind of the person and don't give the opportunity to try a different cigar. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would say, okay, um, tell me your blend profile, I'll make you a new one. Right. Thank you. I'll make you. I'll make you a new one. Give me, give me two years. It'll come out. What's your name? If it's catchy, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll name it after you, and we'll go off of that. And they'll be like, I, 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 I. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, like, oh, okay, if, uh, yeah. If you ever want to use exactly that, if you ever want to use that in a post-COVID era when we go to events again, you can say Joe Zemper from Stogie Geek says I, I should make you a new one. That's <laughs> <laughs> Because you have the opportunity to do that, right? You you make them a new one. Tell me your palate. Tell me what tobaccos you like. I'll make you a new one. It'll be fun. It'll be a great project. Believe me, if something comes in 2021, I can really talk right now so far, but we come with a couple new blends, and that blends is because all the feedback I received for the last two years. Mm. I love your cigar, but I love your cigar, but I like a little bit more of that. Now I'm just going to come with something new, but it's because all the good and bad feedback. I have to say thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yep. a couple new blends coming out 2021. We know that, right? 
Nice. We'll know it after you. Four? Nice. Oh. All right. I'll be quiet. Quattro. <laughs> Quattro. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That's super cool. Um, So. We were at Nat Sherman. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I, thank you. <laughs> Nelson always keeps me That focused. part of our journey. Uh, Nat Sherman. Uh, yeah. And, and like, who did, who did you meet? Like, how did you make the transition to just say, I'm going to leave uh what was a Cosmonic Crystal last and I'm going to do CEO. Like I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to create plans and That's a big jump. And please do well. It's a big jump, right? And uh, it, uh take us through some of that transition and what was going on like inside of your head. Like, okay, I want to create a blend. Uh what do I name it? I'm sure that's a big big thing. Right? It tastes like this. Uh this is what I'm going for. I want to talk about the Sultan, right? I just I just think it's a catchy name. So, to, but 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 before we get there, take us through like that that transition. Like, how did you start um, that journey? You know, that, that is a great question, by the way. Because I'm sure, like pre Casamani Cristo and uh, pre being in New York and making the transition down to Florida, we can talk about the transition from New Yorkers versus Floridians, right? That's uh, we we we'll, we'll get there too. Uh, that'll be fun towards the end, right? But like you, you're catering to different audiences, right? You're clearly catering to different audiences, and it's a big jump. But I'm sure the duties are different, right? So it's like another lifetime ago until you became CEO, this is like a new life. It's like a, a caterpillar that became a butterfly. You know what I mean? Like it's like a new life. It's a whole, cause, cause if, uh, if everything is, is everything's new, changed. It's a, a, yeah. a big step. Um, answer your question. Thank uh, you. <laughs> when the people say, how's that? Like jump from be a manager in Casa de Monte Cristo to jump to be a CEO. And I say, uh, why not? Why not? Like I'm working in the all the different in many different positions on the cigar industry, and I think it can be uh, why not? What I can really don't try something like that? What I can uh, don't put myself to push myself a little bit more and just keep growing. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, Nelson. Well, I'm I'm wondering how that opportunity even presented itself, right? How did, how did you? So you're there, you're managing. What happens? Like, how how does the Nova Platinum become Nova Plat uh, Platinum Nova? Okay, uh, when I had the one of the first meeting with the family office from Nova, uh, and him say, Leo, we want to just offer you the position of CEO. I just I believe I just sit in the church like that, <laughs> and I say like. You guys drinking today, like, <laughs> like, and then I say, why me? And that is the first big mistake I say, because why not? Right. Okay. I, I'm working hard in different positions on the cigar industry. I'm the kind of person, uh, put the cigars on the shelf, clean the floor, take care of the customer, take care of employees when I'm come a manager. Why not? Um, and I think it's the, be honest is one of the, the first thing because you never, I just keep saying, you never know who is going to watching you, who is going to offer you a position, who see all your last five, six years of hard work. And the transition is, um, for me, was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Because one of the first thing uh, the family office say to me, uh, the only thing we're going to ask you is for one thing. I said, okay, here you go. Nothing is free in this life. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and can say to me, be you and never change. Because that is the reason we offer you that position. Because if you keep talk with your heart and you be honest with the consumer, with the people around you, nobody really is going to try to, to attack Nova because we are honest from the beginning. And I think that is that is the, the truth. Like everybody knows me from before, from when I work in Nacherman, Macanudo, and the same people can see me right now. I is the same Leo. It's not about what uh, position I have right now. It's about never change. I never forgot from where you come from. Um, 
So can you talk a little bit about, um, so when you came in, it was Nova. Like how many, fa- just for the listeners, like a little bit of background on Nova, how many facings did they have to where you are now? Okay, when uh, I started with Nova, uh, in the first IPCPR, now it's PCA, we have six limited edition, uh, six phases. But as soon we put um, 11 phases more. Uh, so wow. far now we have 17 different phases, 17 different blends. When I say that, it's because one blend is one size, one name. Right. We know, uh, like... I personal don't believe and make different sizes for the same blend. I think if uh, the robusto with that blend have this profile and I smoke this, I don't need make the same back in total. I just we love the people take the opportunity to try this blend in robusto because I believe it's the best way to smoke that particular blend. Uh, so far now we have 17 blends, 17 different sizes. And if everything working well, very, very soon, we're going to have uh, four new blends, four new sizes. Uh, in that particular, it's going to be two, it's going to be two different sizes, but totally different blends. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, when you do that from a business perspective, you it kind of resonates about what you said i don't know some 20 minutes back when you said it focuses on the consumer right it um it it it, it takes the consumer through a journey of just nova cigars right like so in other words you know this is a robusto uh this is the blend um for example i'm smoking the classic right and you know uh, uh, it's not robusto toro gordo churchill corona and then you know this is the Sultan Robusto. You know what I mean? It, it. So in other words, you have the chance to 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 take. It reminds me of when we had the opportunity here on Story Geeks to introduce, uh, to interview Falto Cigars. Falto Cigars works the same way, right? Where they have a blend and a size, and that's it. And I've gone as far as a consumer from a Falto perspective is saying, well, I want to know what this company is all about, right? And now that I've been introduced to you today and I've had the opportunity to have the cigar today, now I'm like, well, you sent Nelson a pack and where can I get a pack? Because I want to go, you smoke 11 blends, call you. (laughs) Right? No, no, I know, I know. (laughs) No, I'm just saying, like, like, you, you, uh, more importantly, I want to go through the journey of the taste, right? Uh, another example is uh, Noel Rojas has a, a kit one that, you know, you smoke all the different parts of the stick and then go there too. And, and, and like, I enjoy that stuff. Manuel and Noah did it for the Light the Legacy series. Uh, we just had an interview, uh, Story Geeks. Oh, Alec Bradley, yeah. The Alec, where, 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 and, and it really takes you on a journey of that customer stick, which I think from a consumer perspective, it brings them closer to you. As opposed to say, you know, I had this size in a Robusto, I really like it, but when I had the Toro, it's terrible. And quite frankly, I, I, I've had that conversation as late as 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time last night. I was at, I was, I was at a cigar shop next door, right? We have the privilege of being at a cigar shop right next door to where we work, right? I'm at a cigar shop next door, and I was like, you got to have the, uh, we were smoking the Davidoff late hour, right? And I said, and I quote, get the Robusto. And the consumer's like, well, for $2 more, I can get the Toro. And I'm like, dude, the Toro is not up to snuff. It's the Robusto. And I'm telling you, and he grabbed the Toro, and he's like, it's all right. I'm like, that's it. I went over to the thing. I went over the thing. I took his stick. I broke it. Right? Did you really? I broke it. Oh, yeah, I did. I, I flipped out. I flipped out. Because I oh just. Oh, my God. I, I, I love I, your. I, I, I flipped out. I says, what are you doing? I says, wait. I know Jose Blanco says smoking a cigar next to an asshole sucks, right? But I'm going to put this freaking Robusto in your mouth, and I'm going to freaking cut it. With my fancy, I have a fancy thing. I'm, I'm getting very artisan, right? I have a... Where oh, is, the French knife. Where is it? I don't know. It's some. It's around. 
Hold on. I have a... Where is... Oh, my God. Uh oh It was here. I cut it. It's right. gonna... Anyway, right? I'll find it during the interview, right? And we lost Joe. I cut the I cut the thing. Oh yeah, now I'm off, right? I cut the thing and, and I said, "Smoke it," and he's like, "Holy crap, it's amazing!" I said, "Why don't you freaking listen to me in the first place?" Because you know, I, I I'm like, I, I, I'm like uh, and he's like, "Listen to me." He's like, he's like, "I'm never gonna hear the end of this." You know, it's a friend of mine, Holy right? It's crap. It's a friend of mine, and, and I'm like, he's like, "I'm never gonna hear the end of this." I was like, "No, you're not." Like, it's going to be six years from now, just like golf, and I could have potted it, but I didn't because I blew it, and I was in the sand. And what I said, the good news is about golf is we're going to have the same conversation 10 years from now. It's going to be fun, right? So it's cool, right? <laughs> and then the good news is, like, it, some blends are better with different blends, and that's the point. You, and so when the consumer, your consumer specifically, goes into that journey, they get to walk that fine line of whatever flavor profile you were trying to put together or the company was trying to put together. And that's a special thing. Yeah, that's it a, really is. That's a special thing for the retailer to know their customers, right? That's a special thing for the consumer to wake up in the morning. And I don't know about you, but sometimes it's I wake, work for everyone. Right. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I feel like an X, whatever it is. And I have to have that cigar. I know, that is my second, but that is my ashtray from today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, know yeah. what you're talking you about. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? No, but and, uh, Joe, you're right. I mean, th there's a lot of brands out there. I'm not going to name any, but there are brands out name there. Name them. Some are, hey, this is what we have. This is what we sell, right? And to me, that's not a journey because they stopped, right? And then there's companies like yours where you're constantly trying to, what is the next best thing? And to Joe's point, if I go back to, you know, your first, uh, I think you said 11 sticks, you know, that's the beginning of the journey. And now I, I can try the new, the new ones coming out this year and everything in between. And I see the journey of Nova growing as a cigar company and their blends. But then you've got these other guys, you know, that, again, not saying anyone, but they just don't change. They stay the same like, and, and we, they're selling what they sell. Like, uh, like, I just keep saying, when we talk about boutique, we talk about... So I'm, a, I'm, gonna, yes, I'm a little bit confused sometimes for people talk about boutique blend. Boutique blend means we have less production a year. This means we really have to work in more hard in each cigar because we know are a huge company. Mm -hmm. But who put, I want to know, who put a small company boutique well, we've talked about this oh, on the show. Yeah. Cigar company. We had I a think whole discussion. I, I just think you, quantity of cigars. I just think you added another sixteen hours to the episode. Yeah, we had a whole discussion <laughs> a few weeks ago around who who defines boutique. Yeah, that that is the thing. Who who is going to target you? You are good enough to I can give you this number, or you know are good. Like on the end, is a consumer on the end. Everybody working on the cigar industry. Everybody have followers on the cigar industry. And sometimes people, and I'm not here, and you're never gonna, you can push me, but I'm never gonna talk bad about any company because I'm said all that cigars before I come Nova, and I respect all of him for sure. But sometimes I don't understand what people put the small companies produce, set amount of cigar a year are boutique. We are a cigar company. Anyway, no, no, that yeah, we've I've had the opportunity to interview uh, hosts and founders, original founders of the Boutique Cigar Association, and you know, um, not to take things personally, but you know, they didn't. The, I said on the show multiple times, they didn't define what a boutique company is. Right, and yet, yet you're gonna join the association. I'm not saying not to, because I think legislatively it makes sense. You have a voice. We all know how things. Are. That's why, like Cigar Rights America, or or uh -huh. and those are all important. PCA, IPCPR, debacle, right? You know, changing the name. Those are all important in there. But to have a focus and def and definition. And my thing is, do you, why do you need a definition? Like, it's okay to have a Boutique Cigar Association. I'm not taking anything away from them. Please don't, you know, confuse what I'm saying. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the Story Geeks community, you know. Yes, where, please. Be clear in that yeah, part because yeah. if we don't be clear, people, it's not bad. I'm okay if the people say, like, Boutique say it's, it's great. But sometimes I'm just thinking about to definitely a, a, a cigar uh, company 
because how many cigars make a year have to be on that side and don't have to be in that yeah, side? Yeah, but that hasn't even that been defined. Been yeah, but it hasn't even been defined. No one's defined, even right? said you that. Have, you have, you have Espa, a perfect example, right? I'm the only one who name drops. So I'll, I'll, I'll take all the bad rap. Email all your hate email the uh, Nelson at StogieGeeks.com, <laughs> right? Um, you know, no, it, it's like it's like you have like Espinosa who sells a boatload of them, and then yeah, it's still considered, but not for nothing. Espino, it, it's a crafty cigar company. They craft different blends, different things. They got a lot of super cool things going on. I've been talking about the blend, the brand for at least four years that I've been here now. I enjoy their stuff. Some of their stuff gets limited production and it's super cool and it's sought after and the forums go crazy. Other stuff is more regular production. But at the bottom line is it's still that journey for that consumer to enjoy that product. Just like it's it's still important for your consumer to enjoy your product and add that to his or her portfolio. And people always worrying about definition. Is it a boutique cigar? What do you got? What, what, what are the boutiques? What are, who cares? If you enjoy it, you enjoy it. Right. And, and another, you know, it's another thing. I just see, you know, in, I'm not going to say in all, but many, many, many cigar stores. And I just keep trying to talk with the owner, with the rep. Don't put boutique blend on the corner when nobody going to see. <laughs> We need you guys' help to right. people see what is outside, what is new. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say just move all the big ones, but at least let the consumer, the client, hey, that is our boutique uh, cigars company, like a small companies make 100 cigars a year at least, blah, 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 blah. We need this kind of help sometimes. And on the same time, it's... It's open the door to the consumer. We we everything we do, everything you guys do it right now with the show, everything I'm doing my own, everything is direct from the consumer. It's I don't have time to deal with all the headache around. I, I just prefer be in my own water. Don't have headache with no one. I don't want to just. I, that is not me. But you know, we need this kind of help. And when Nelson just called me to be in this show, I'm wow because. You open the opportunity, at least people can know a little bit more about Nova, mm -hmm. about the face of Nova. And that is great because we need these kind of channels. Yes, yes. And and I, I think that the channels are super important as well. There's room for everybody. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I get, a lot of questions I get about Stoic okay. Geeks. Like, I'm you sorry, know, you say it's room from everybody. There's and I'm agree with you thousand yeah. times. Yeah. Because and people sometimes don't get it. A new company is not, oh my God, another new company. Right. No, it's something else on the table for all of you. Right. For all of you to enjoy and all of you to experience because at the end right. of the day, it's an experience, right? I'm blessed to have work every day where, where I, I can have a cigar every day. I can relax. I can do my work. I sometimes don't have a chance to relax at work, right? But every day is a new experience of this cigar and of whatever it is there, right? And I, I think that sometimes the consumers get caught up in that race. You know, what's new from this big company? What's new from that? Well, what the big companies do is they do Robusto Toro, Gordo, Churchill, Lancero, and the Churchills and Lanceros sit on the shelves. The Robustos historically are more tastier. And then they order. The, and it's like it's the same old routine. Like it's the same old routine. You know what I mean? You don't have to say anything. I know. You can, <laughs> I'm just saying. Right? And, and I'm just like, listen, like if you, if you, it's the journey. Like it's the journey of each company. And that's what I love about story because we, we've interviewed classic facings. We've had, I mean, you know, we, we, we've had companies all the way up to Gurkha and there, you know, and when I interviewed Gurkha, I simply said, hey, you got like 60 freaking facings. I can't get through of them because some of them are really tasty. Some of them are like not really tasty. Help me. Help my listeners, our listeners, but, you know, help our listeners go through your journey quicker. Because we're not going to go 
because uh, then you have the online, not online thing, all different companies, all that, all that debacle. P companies get upset. Some of the retailers get upset because, you know, uh, I own a, a small brick and mortar, but I can't compete against, you know, a, a, a CI or a Holtz or anything like that. And it's like, no, you can. You can do that by connecting with your audience. Stogie Geeks is a living example of that, right? The original co-host of Stogie Geeks not even on the show anymore yet the numbers are still climbing so what does that tell you right it tells you that it's a platform for everyone to enjoy I and, and Nelson today have the opportunity to enjoy in hearing it from you but more importantly our listeners our audience has the opportunity to have you in the podcast and hear about you and, in, and it's an experience for everyone and I think sometimes when you walk the show floor you know, the trade show floor, it, it, that message does not bear through at all. You know what I mean? What are you going to do? All right? What are you going to do? No, so okay, you have a question? Well, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, I was actually interested in the branding, right? So when you came in, did you have the branding you have or did you help develop that? that because that, your branding on your cigars... Uh, and everything else, like your your lighter. I got. I brought in the lighter and the cigar cutter here. I love the baby blue. It yeah. yeah. I I <laughs> that's the first thing I said to Nelson when he when he walked through the door today. I'm like, dude, I I I love the baby it blue. It pops on the cigars. Branding. It's so awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Are you responsible for yeah, that? Yeah, everything is meant to be. When I just come to work in Nova, everything is set up in baby blue. All the labels is ready. Uh, everything is ready. And you know, like, of course, we designed this lighter like last year, but the label, the colors of the brand, everything is ready before I'm gonna start working with Nova. Pre and the good part, I just feel very um, attractive because uh, working with many different lines of cigar, try different cigars, put something on the shelf, at least half in your eyes and say, hey, we here. At least look at me, <laughs> uh, and that color just yes, make that look on the, in any humidor, any retails you guys go. It's like, hey, it's like I'm here. I love the color. I love uh, the name Nova. It, Nova is a, a small. Uh, it's, it's a star. Have a beautiful bride. That is the name Nova means. Uh, it's like small but bright. And from the day one, I identify myself with all around Nova for the color, because it's a delicate, beautiful uh, color. Um, it's, I don't want to say it's a woman touch, but I believe everybody loves Tiffany. <laughs> 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 and it's like a, a woman touch. And I say like, wow, that is meant to be. That has to be for me. I have to run in this show because everything around me, the name, the color, the box, the presentation, I love it. I love it from the day one. Plus, when I start to smoke the cigar, I say like, wow, I'm really enjoying the cigar. I'm really enjoying this blend. I really enjoy this blend. Uh, and I'm feeling in love. Uh, and it's easy when you represent that are the face of the company, you believe from the day one. And I believe in Nova. I believe in, in all the concepts about Nova. We are different. We don't want to be better of no one. We want to be better in our own. We want to um, push ourselves to make better things on the cigar industry. Uh, but yeah, the color, the brand, the name is already there. When I start working with Nova, we and the color and everything make a click. We feel it in love. I, I like it. I, I've always associated it with you. So I just, uh, in my head, it was it was you. So. No, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's an interesting. I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting scheme of colors. Uh, shelf talking. If you're talking shelf talk, is in business and there, yeah. the color pops. It stands out, and that's one of the things that really stand out. Like on social media, you know, you you have the the powder blue, and it shows up in your profile. So you take a look at it, and you're like, all right, cool. What's this new? You right. know, what's at the time? You know, what's this company? What are they doing? Who are they? Where are they? Uh, I can't get them here in the Northeast. You know, um, you know, and, and and it they begin that journey because at the end of the day even if you use dish soap right and you look at household products there are certain families that swear by this company and want this company or whatever mm -hmm. because that's their comp that's the consumer journey and 
now with wine and craft beer, cigars, all you go on a journey with them because it really is an artisan. It's an art, right? Selling wine or, or making wine is an art. The craft beer industry is an art. Now with social media, the, those types of industries have flourished and bloomed because it's the journey, right? That's why, like, you know, the, you know, you get, like, the classic facings in another, without naming any more premium cigars, you go into the beer, right? Why is Budweiser getting into seltzer, right? Because seltzer is up 160% because people are sitting around here at COVID and they want the fruity tooty. And sometimes, I, I'm not going to lie, I'm digging the seltzer. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> You have to, like, that is a thing. Like, you put the, um, the example with the Budweiser. If you think with the consumer mind, you open your mind yes. to put more stuff outside. If you think only about what you like and what we, 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 it's not about we, it's about us. It's about the consumer, what the consumer expects, uh, what can like now, we have to think about it now. People spend more time inside. <coughs> Sorry. Can can go out, maybe can smoke on the balcony. Uh, we working on this particular site. It's a quick cigar. Like we have to think everything on the consumer. That is me. And I don't say the company. <coughs> Sorry. That's okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's getting aggressive. <laughs> That is seltzer, no. <laughs> <laughs> Budweiser <laughs> seltzer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, and I think it's great because you can think outside of the box. You know, you think different. You make the stuff different. And when you um, do a different stuff, sometimes you are, maybe you can cross that small line to the people that attack you because you are different. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm okay, like because I'm different in my own. I don't attack anyone. I just want to try to listen more, uh, put more stuff on the table, more blends on the table because I'm listening. I, I like to spend more time and I keep repeat consumer, friends, because all of you, people like Nova, companies like Nova, can put a new product on the table. Yep. You have to just think outside of the box. Let's. I, I totally agree, and and it, it, you're a breath of fresh air for the industry for sure. I think that they need to, and, and it's lessons that the small batch or boutiques thrive on, and it's what the classic facings are aspiring to be, right? So, it, so it's like you know, imitation is the best form of flattery, right? Of Why does Romeo and Julieta produce a Nicaraguan cigar? They did it round one. Right, it, it it wasn't a hit, so now they have to have a collaboration with AJ. Right, so like imitate and 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 and, and say, say you know they've been known for Dominican cigars forever. La Aurora just came out with the Nicaraguan plan. They've been a freaking business since 1903, and and they've been in the Dominican Republic. But, but that is great. That is it, great. It, it is. Right. It is great. It's a great journey to go. But it's like I think from an industry perspective. You have the big classic facings here, and then you have, call it small batch. It doesn't even have to be boutique, right? Small batch here, and they have different messages, and then, you know, different business principles, different ways of sourcing tobacco, different access to experimental and blends, uh, you know, and, and, and somewhere in the middle is the consumer going like this, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And it's like, it's okay, because that shows that the industry itself will progress moving forward, as opposed to getting stale. It's yeah. not like, that is me, that is what you like, if you like it, fine, if you don't like it, I don't care. Right, and it's okay to like a Nova and, and a Monte Cristo, like, it's okay. Course. Like you know what I mean? It's perfect. If you want a better smoke, if you want a better smoke, you try the Nova. I mean, it's just uh, right. You're not expecting <laughs> that your consumers are only smoking Nova. Right? Oh no, no, of course not. No, it's a no, no. I'm not smoke only Nova. I love Nova, but I, can, I I'm a, I'm a smoking for the last ten years, and I'm a smoke many different brands, and I respect many different owners, cigars, companies. Uh, no, I'm not born yesterday and I start smoking Nova. I like Nova. 
I have Nova every day, so it's my office. But no, 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 no. It's like, it, that is the thing. We don't want to make followers to only smoke Nova. We want to just make an opportunity to come to your to your house, to your palace, so you can try us. Maybe one day, a month, you say, you know what, I'm feeling like today I'm going to smoke Nova. Perfect. Right. You know, Leo, at the top of the interview, you mentioned, I think is when you were working with Macanudo, you smoked a cigar there. Uh, you're, I think you said with your dad, and that made you fall in love with cigars, right? What was that cigar? Ooh. No, that... Uh, ah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> That's a good and one. I, okay, the only, the only tip I'm going to explain to you, I'm working in Macanudo. Macanudo's General Cigar have to be one of the line of General Cigar. That's it. Okay. Then, when I'm in smoke with my dad, if I feel in love, maybe I'm not explain, explain exactly what I want to say. Uh, I'm feeling in love with share something else with my dad. Ah. The cigar, for the first time, try a cigar. I really don't understand the cigar. Mm -hmm. Like, I said, like, mm, like, what is that? <laughs> like, I don't get it. But then I'm going to start learning a little bit more about the, the cigars, the families, the fields before, uh, behind. And I put all together and just, you know what, plus this particular cigar let me enjoy. Mm -hmm. Time with my time with my dad, quality time. So it was less uh, about the cigar and more about the experience. It sounds like. Yeah, the, that is a thing. People remember moments. Don't yep. remember really brands. You don't like, remember the brand? Oh, you do remember the brand. You just don't want to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you you do remember the brand, don't you? You could say I'm not saying it. That's fine. Because then my next no, comment, because then my next comment, would be like, well, you should run for office. Then you're you're well qualified. <laughs> <laughs> you, do Do you remember the brand? Do you remember? Yes. The, okay. Do you want to tell us? No. Okay, that's fine. I was <laughs> I respect your privacy. That's fine. No, I, I remember the brand. I'm gonna tell it to everyone because uh, is when. Leo, Cigar Blonde, star, and he's in Macanudo. And one of the um, cigars I smoked that time is the, um, what you call the, co um, it's Cohiba, but it's not the Cohiba from Cohiba, it's Cohiba from Dominican. Yes, yep. Uh, and it's a great cigar. Okay. It's, it's a great cigar. Yeah, that's a good, uh, that's a good entry okay. level. Now, the, now we good? We got it. No, 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 we no, got no, it. no, we got it. Wait, wait. <laughs> was a Cohiba, a regular Cohiba, or was it like a Bahike? Uh, no, it's a regular. regular okay, I don't fine. have enough money on that time to pay a Bejique, okay? <laughs> that's a good, very good point. A, a very, Bejique yeah. is not Dominican. Come on. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very, very good point. All right. So, it's, yeah, so you enjoyed it. And honestly, that, that that's a, that's a well, it's it's not like, you know, it's not like it was like, you know, I don't know, like a Tatiana or something. You know what I mean? A flavored cigar. You smoked a real cigar with your dad and enjoyed the and enjoyed the time and you know something i when 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 my father was living we we i smoked cigars with my dad and it was super cool and my grandfather and i remember being little like i couldn't smoke cigars right I, we would walk to the walk to the store for him and he would get the cigar and then he would walk down and then i remember oh we're gonna go home he's like no 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 my grandfather would be like we're not going home yet it, 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 the, the walk's too short we have to keep walking around so i can finish the cigar and then at the end i'm like okay i'm gonna go run upstairs to to my grandmother because i'm done with this but you know i was a little, little <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> you know but i remember that that time and, and and being with that and and seeing that and and those are precious moments and now fast forward when you have those with friends you know, uh, or, or or people you meet either in the shop or at your house or however you do your smoke. It's it's just time that's just well spent over a cigar, and and you are right. Sometimes the cigar doesn't matter. You know what I mean? But it's, it's good to know, and I'm glad we we got the answer too. I'm happy. About it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this this is exactly why Jose Blanco is spot on. Because, oh yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you're not smoking a cigar just to smoke a cigar, right? Mm -hmm. It really is an experience. It's always an experience. And you know what? I don't want an asshole to ruin my experience. Right. And yeah. it's so true. I mean, I can remember times smoking cigars with Joe. I remember exactly the stick he was smoking, well, where we were, because it was an experience. It wasn't just oh, I'm going to smoke another cigar. 
Nelson only smokes a cigar in there and, and then the people ask you, why do you smoke cigar? Uh, because I like it, because I enjoy. The yes. second, because I have age enough to smoke cigar. How's that? Yeah. Right. Nelson only has to put up with me for Stogie Geeks. After that, that's the only time he smokes a cigar next to an asshole. Right? Not true. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Um, I, Nelson, do I have your permission to try the salt in? It would, it would kill me. If no, I, go ahead, brother. Okay, good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna to light up another one. I, I, I had the classic. I do want to take some time and talk about some of your profiles if you could elaborate to the stogie geek listener like you know and you can either go through a list or your top favorites whatever like what profile were you what what were you shooting and 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 we can have this discussion because each size is its blend right so what were you shooting for when you did the classic or would you like me to tell you what i'm experiencing and we can see if i'm way off or kind of close you when want? I start, be my guest. Okay, perfect. Right, perfect. Thank you, thank you. And then if you want to elaborate on yours, we can see if we're we're close. I lit up the classic. This is the first, this is the second cigar that I had today. Okay? So I so I lit up the classic and immediately off the bat, I'm getting a almost leather component, right? With some cocoa, but you do get what I've often said here on the show, old school taste. It's not zingy. It's not, it, 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 it's got to be Dominican in there for sure because it has a milder component that what I say is like old school. And what I mean, it's like a, I know it's called classic, but it's like an old school type of, of positioning. Had a slow burn. Clearly I'm going down to the nub only relit it because I'm talking all the time because I don't have word economy, right? And and we're doing an interview. But it's like, it gets you there. And then when you retrohail it, it gives you just a little bit of spice to have you say, huh, I want a little bit more. But I like the cigar. I think it's a great cigar for that there. It doesn't transition. It smokes the same way all the way through. So it so it, it's not flat at all. Like it's not it's not boring. It's just 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 old school flavor. That's my takeaway uh, from this. You you use the word old school flavor, and I love it because uh, in all our cigars you're gonna see um, whatever cigar you try. Now you talk about the Sultan before ask me about the Sultan. In I'm all cutting our that right now. I'm cutting the Sultan right now, and I found my okay. my fancy artisan knife too, on the set that I lost. Did you find it? I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, in all our lines, um, that is the thing. We just uh, I keep saying, no, by full of surprise. You never think it's a light cigar because the wrapper look light, but you never think it's a full body cigar because the Rapid is dark, and that is a misconception for many people. Like the one you're gonna smoke now, the, the Sultan have a beautiful San Andres wrapper. It's a oily, beautiful cigar. The wrapper you're gonna see it like a. I can. I call that cigar is a perfect box press torpedo mm. because it's perfect. <laughs> uh, in all our cigars, you're gonna have that. You never know if you think, ah, okay, you know what, this is a nice smooth cigar. Just wait. Because we want to, you just, it's like a, you're feeling in love from the beginning. You think that is all. No, you just wait. Now more surprises going to come in. And it's exactly the same way with all the Nova lines. You're going to start smoking. You're going to start um, feeling like, oh, it's very smooth, creamy. Next thing, oh, hold on one second. What is the, what is the spicy? What, from where did the spicy come from? And next thing, no, you're going to have like a, hmm, it's a little bit, sweet but it's the sweet from the dark wrap it's 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 gonna you're never gonna have never gonna be born to smoke a nova and never think on the first two or three puffs you already gonna describe the cigar mm -hmm. that is not gonna happen in any of our line mm -hmm. yeah the now I, i've made the transition and i could see or taste right i can taste that's a better word right i can taste it's like ooh. Now the Sultan, it's more my wheelhouse. I'm getting pepper, retrohale, pepper, boom, right? I had to search for pepper with the classic, which it's a milder cigar, right? I get it, right? Uh -huh. But I'm like, wow, this is pepper. 
uh, the wood. I can feel the woody component trying to come through. And now I I have to go through the profile to. And now I I will take the label when I get my hands on all the sticks. I will complete my journey and my training like a Jedi. I'll be a Nova Jedi, and <laughs> and I will complete my training and and go through the profile and and do them and talk about them. I'll put them up on the site for you, Story Geeks listeners. I'll tag you in when I get there and and, and do that there. And, and and but I can see like the total difference just for going from the classic to the Sultan. And another thing, and I don't know, you just finished with the classic, now you want to smoke the Sultan San Andres. I, I have water here. Um, I'm going to ask you, you feel that after test, like your tongue is tired to smoke another cigar? For that is one of our um, important thing in any of our line. We don't want that uh, after test, like your tongue feeling tired to keep smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe you are ready to smoke. You finish right now with the classic, you're gonna be ready to smoke the Sultan. Two totally different blends. Yes. But your palate is clean. Yes, yes. It's no uh, tired for pepper, spicy, caramel, uh, goody nut. No, it's, it's clear to just keep trying different cigars. And I love that part because that is one of our goal in our line. Mm, it's ready for takeoff. I'm ready. I'm ready to go through the journey. Um, you know, I, I think it's super cool. And it's box pressed. Um, what, how was your first one? Let's see if you could describe your first one. Well, it's funny. Before I do, I'm, I'm trying now the platinum batch. I think it's the Robusto, the sweet tipped. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I didn't do this first because this is my third Nova today. <laughs> okay, good you leave that one from the end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that particular cigar, uh, I know how I have this one and I have the, the Sultan, the one we're talking about. That sugar tip is something totally different. Very. People say, ah, it's a flavor cigar. No, it's not a flavor cigar. It's like a sugar tip. On the wrap, that's it. But that sugar tip is gonna take away all the um, aftertaste from the Conerico, the hearty. Conerico wrapper is a little bit hearty, and this one of the things and I personal don't like on the Conerico is is hearty. And I don't like that hearty. And when we decide to put the sugar tip in that cigar, it's changed completely. The only thing you wanna keep do Nelson is hmm. That's yes. what I keep doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but I tried the um, Platinum Nova Batch Torpedo. Mm -hmm. And Joe has way, I'm just, just so all the Stogie Geeks know, in case we've never figured this out, and you too, Leo, Joe has way more experience with cigars than I, I just discovered cigars during COVID. But I went from zero <laughs> to 100. I went bananas. I just, I got really geeky about it. And it's probably part of the reason I'm on Stogie Geeks. And I just, I really love the flavors and experiencing new cigars. I'm definitely not a one cigar guy. Joe, Joe calls me a cigar chaser. Yes. Right? Because, and I'm, I got to talk to you about Leo X after, but. He chased you. Like, he was like, he's a chaser. Like, I, I he's like, did cigars. you ever hear Nova Cigars? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, the, the, did, did, this is how the conversations go. Did you ever hear Nova Cigars? <laughs> yeah, that's that baby blue cigar. Did you ever have them? No. They have no reps in the Northeast. They came out in 2019 and we're in COVID. Okay. Uh, I'll get them. I'll get them. <laughs> I'll get them on the show. I'm like, knock yourself out. Like, you know what I mean? Because he's a stick chaser. He's a, he chases you. He harasses you on Instagram. Hey, I'm Nelson. Hey, what's up? Send me some sticks and come on the show. It'll be great. You know what I mean? And, and I'm just like, yeah, man, just, just knock yourself out. Kid. All right. Like, we get it. We get know? it. <laughs> no, I, I think it's great for, for, because, because it, it, it's a different dynamic to the show. And, but I think that you chasing i mean what you had what uh uh the kid uh it was a kid he just had a kid he just had a kid stolen throne oh you, stolen yeah. throne yeah, yeah. it's another it's another example stolen throne right nelson's a stick chaser Lee marsh you yeah. gotta try these sticks they're super awesome right northeast they're great. Texas. do not let us forget when you leave us to talk about the northeast people versus floridians i so make sure if i so make sure that that all happens. But, you know, he's like, you got to get stolen from him. Like, dude, just bring him on. Like, it'll be cool to hear him. I tried it, and I'm like, holy crap. His stuff is good. I like it. You know what I mean? And then he's like, it's rolled by your boy. Your boy. 
I he's a big fan of Rojas. A big fan of Rojas. Like completely like, you know, I'm just a fan. It is what it is. And I'm not a fanboy of a lot of people. So just just, just so you know, right? And, and okay. I'm, and, I hope you are in the I hope my name is gonna be in the good part of the book. Actually, you know what's happening, honestly. I, I would honestly and I talked about someone about this. I'm gonna be I really don't like you, Leo, but it's okay. No, 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 no. If if I if, I like you, Leo. If I owned a cigar <laughs> shop, if I owned a cigar shop, you would you would be on my shelf today. Thank you. Like today, because of the dynamic, and 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 because of the dynamics of, if I owned a cigar shop, I would have consumers, right? I want them to have go go through a journey. No offense, but the business model is a freaking journey. Like step one, right? It, it's hey, the different sides. It's just like Louis Falto, right? Just a, it, 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 it is a journey. You might not like all of them, but you're gonna go through the repertoire. And if you go through the repertoire. You're smoking Nova, right? And if you and if I'm the cigar shop owner, I'm selling you Nova, right? So you would be right beside Noah Rojas if I had a shop. <laughs> so I'm just saying, take it or leave it, right? You know, there'd be no, I take there, it. there would not be a Cohiba on there on that shelf, right? Because I think that that's that that time had passed, and and there's other places, but I would want my consumers to come into my shop and experience. And, and, and there, there are some and, bigger and that things that I would make, have there, too. And that is what your store is going to make the difference with the rest of the store. Yeah. Because you sell experience. You sell uh, memories. You sell uh, passion of the cigar industry. Yes. And if you take time to put everything on the play, people are going to feel in love not only with the cigar, with everything around your store right and that person gonna back to your store right because you treat him like a different client because everybody's different yep everybody likes different stuff and when you just do it that click with the consumer everything is going to change yep. completely that might... is not about the cigar it's about like the person can come back to the store and say you know what i really don't like that cigar okay why you don't like it before i recommend something else why you don't like that cigar Tell me, because I want to tell you to the CEO of the company, your feedback, because for me, it's super important, that feedback. If, and it's just communication with. If consumer. someone came into my store and said they didn't like a Nova, I would say, we're going to call Leo. She's going to make you a new one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to make you a new one. Just, just no, you say like, hold on one second. <laughs> yep. And I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, hold on. We got over here. You're going to go. And, and, and she's going to make you a new one. That's it. Peace. We're moving on. So now that I set the stage. <laughs> I'm sorry. Great, Nelson. That's great. That's great. Right. Going back to the Platinum Nova Batch Torpedo. Yes. Um, so I was setting the stage because I don't have the, the experienced palate that Joe has. Uh, granted, uh, I smoked plenty of cigars in 2020. Don't get me wrong. So um, with this one, I think I, I got definitely some, I want to say like dry, I don't want to say cherry, like a, a drier, like fruity kind of thing. Red clump. <laughs> right? Red berries. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, kind of floral, not super florals, not strong, but little floral. I actually really like the smoke production on that thing. And it got a little spicy, not too much at the end. Um, so how close am I to the, those notes? No, uh, that, that is a Bano 2000 wrapper. Uh, and in this um, collection, we make San Andres, Toro, uh, a Bano 2000 wrapper torpedo. And the one you're going to smoke right now is a Connecticut with the sugar tip. Um, it's three cigars, the same collection, totally different cigars. In the torpedo, you're going to have that, the, the red berries. You're going to have um, espresso, dark espresso. Oh. Uh, I'm like a little bit spicy, like you say on the end, because that is one of the things with Nova. We want to just, you keep the smoke and the surprise is going to come in. You never know. Be ready. Yeah. I did have uh, a little sweetness on the retro hail too. A little bit of sweetness. Because the sugar is already in your... Uh, no, hand. no, on the torpedo, on the torpedo. Oh, I think you talk about that one. No, <laughs> this one I just started. I can't, I can't assess this one yet. Other than I it's just sweet. See you, Nelson, I just see you do it like, mm, mm. You see me doing that? <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah, tobacco this <laughs> University calls that umami. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, I really like that flavor and whatnot. And 
you know, it, it, and, and there's a lot of, uh, I get a lot of that from like Mexican San Andreas rapper where I'm like, after I'm like, wow, like I, it's still there. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it. You know what I mean? And, and whatnot. That and so one, the, the San Andreas rapper is going to give you a lot of surprises, especially that blend the Sultan, because you want to, I, I don't want to talk sometimes i don't want to describe the cigar because when i'm described it's my personal touch it's my personal palate sure so and i don't want to put this thing in your mind because you're going to find up different profiles in the same cigar yeah. now i'm self-conscious i'm not going to lick my lips anymore <laughs> <laughs> hey i don't know i don't know um <laughs> so what when you what's your favorite of uh, like what what's your favorite describe your favorite like and I know it depends on the day and and your mood and all of that stuff but like the what's the one you you your go to you uh, maybe not go to like what's the one you like if you had to present a Nova cigar to and pick whatever a, a movie star president whatever I don't like to talk politics or religion on the show nope. right but right but if you were to whoever right or uh, you were going to, to to do that there like what would be like your cigar you would like like you know say hey like try try this one and this is why yeah one definitely has to be the one I put my name the Leo X. Uh, Leo X, I just want to make sure everyone understands the X is because represents the 10 years I'm working on the industry. And when I put, it's my first time, of course, I put my name on the cigar. And that has my extra personal touch because I'm, I'm not a blender, but I'm the person let everybody crazy on the fabric. I want a little bit more of that, a little bit less of that. And when Leo X, the cigar, comes with my name, uh, I just want to make sure when you smoke that cigar, you understand the person behind that cigar and the name behind us, that cigar. That cigar is going to give you everything. Any any day, any time of the day, uh, you really going to enjoy for it's a nice medium cigar. And I just keep saying, um, if you don't know what you really like, start with a medium cigar because you're going to understand if you want to go one step to more full or one step less more uh, light cigar. Uh, for sure, I can recommend 100% the Leo X uh, because it's, it's my personal touch and I love it. Nice Havana 2000, Dominican feeling and binder. Uh, but next to that, um, the next, I, I, I'm going to say the next one because Leo is, Leo is here, it's my heart. But I really enjoy all the lines. Uh, it's it's like you say before, it depends the day, depend the move, depend my time, depend it depends many, many things, but the one I can really gonna say is try the Leo X. But now Leo X is sold out. <laughs> <laughs> this is leading to my next question. <laughs> yes, it's sold out. I like I'm, I'm, we only make five hundred boxes. Um we glad many people, yes, wanna know a little bit more about Leo and I'm describe that cigar like my personality inside of the cigar. And many, many, many people start try like it by boxes, and uh, we are so that I'm happy for that because we only make 500 boxes and that's it. And for put that cigar uh, two years ago, thinking about it for one year, we really don't have place to sell. Uh, we do it great, uh, and I just keep saying yes, be in touch because I'm I'm feeling like an iPhone. You know what? It's gonna be upgrade. This means now Leo gonna have 11 years. This means something else is coming over there. Sure. And it's going to be one of my new blends too. Uh, but yeah, we love to share when everything is up to share. Um, but yeah, I just like, I, I really enjoy the Habanos, the rapid Habanos. I'm really, really enjoy. And I'm enjoy the Nicaragua, Nicaragua rapper, Nicaragua filler, Nicaragua rojiza rapper. I love it. We have the Nicaragua rojiza in one of the limited edition. And I'm really enjoy too. But so far, yes, to answer the question, Leo. But Leo is all that. So you're in trouble. That's it. Yeah. The, the <laughs> no, cigar. but it's okay. It's okay. Next, if we want to talk about the Habano 2000, the one and Nelson tried, the um, Latino Batch Torpedo, is you want to have something in that particular cigar. I don't want to say similar, but you want to have a little bit of the love I just put on the Leo X. Gotcha. Yeah, the cigar chaser on the show. When I was looking online, I was very disappointed 
that the Leo X is sold out. So I, yeah. I, based on what you're telling me, apparently I have no, zero chance of acquiring one. I don't know. I think we could find some in the back room somewhere. That always happens. <laughs> okay, you know what? To be honest, I have a couple because it's my name, but I think I'm going to save over there for for years and years and years. Yeah. <laughs> and that is another thing. When we say we make a limited production, limit like with uh, Leo X, we make 500 boxes and it's done. And of course, people say, Leo, we would love to try your cigar. I don't want to make another blend because I don't want to lie the consumer. I have enough tobacco to make that blend for 500 boxes. Yep. That's it. Yep. I, I don't want to put another production of Leo 10 because it's not going to be the same. It won't be the same, right? Right. And 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 that's the great business model, to because like you when it comes out for the Leo 11 or 12 or whatever you want to do, you better get on it now, and that's it. And 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 it, it's it's it, it it draws attention to the company. It makes people. It makes consumers loyal, which is important, and it makes it makes them go like to stick chases. Right. Exactly. No, but you know, Joe. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right? Joe's absolutely right. Right. As stick as a, chasers. That's as a consumer, right? It drives me crazy when a a, a a company comes out with a quote unquote. I'm using air quotes, right? Limited edition cigar, and then it's gone. And then all of a sudden, six months later, it's like, oh, we found a few more boxes, <laughs> and now we're. You know what I mean? It's like, what the hell? Well, so no, I, I we, respect we, that more. When we made, like, I, I love the idea, everybody loves Leo X. Uh, we have a lot of great feedback, but we don't have no more of Leo X. It's nothing I can do, and I'm not going to just come, ah, oh, I just find something. No, exactly. no, it's not going to happen. And exactly with the six limited edition we carry, we make 500 boxes of each. Of course, we still have boxes to sell, but when it's done, it's done. It's like, uh, it's not, ah, let me, oh, I find, no, because that tobacco is enough tobacco for this blend. I can really go back and buy the same tobacco because it's not true. It's impossible. Right. Right. Awesome. I thought I was the only one that used the pick, but here we go. Ah, no. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I think it don't, don't, go, don't look good when I'm smoking like that. No, yeah. it's crazy. Ah. It looks like you're smoking a roach. Not good. That's okay. <laughs> hey. Um... We have we always at the end of the episode spend a couple of minutes or in between. Nelson brings up some news tidbits, so I just want you to. It could do. Do, do you have at least fifteen more minutes before we wrap up? Is that good? Time wise, is that good? Well, no. Yes. Okay. Cool. Enjoy. Your, you you can chime in if you want to. You don't have to chime in if you want to. You can just say I'm out. I don't want to talk about anybody. <laughs> no, no, else. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. There, I'm, but, okay. But I'm, I'm really having a very nice time. I'm yeah, enjoying. Yeah, Nelson has like two 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 or three subjects he likes to give out uh, there because we talk about them continuing on social media and all of that stuff. And then um, I do want to end with talking about uh, New Yorkers versus Floridians uh, there too. So that that'll be the. the the, the next couple of, of, of minutes there. So, Nelson, uh, get right to it. What do you got? Yeah, sure. I'm going to start with uh, the Nat Sherman story uh, because Leo's on and she has a connection there. So, uh, I titled this one, Nat Sherman Knocked Down But Not Out. Uh, following its closure of its retail whole business last September, uh, many people thought it was the end of the brand. They had been trying to sell uh, Nat Sherman, I think, since 2018, I want to say. Um, but last September, they decided to just close the, the wholesale and retail shops. Um, so they're down, but they're not out. Uh, uh, they were owned by Altrius as the, they were the former owner of Nat Sherman. But two former employees of Nat Sherman, uh, Michael Horklotz, who you know, and uh, did you know also uh, Brendan Scott? Yes. Yeah, so those, those two uh, acquired it, the former employees. One was the... Uh, of course, Michael, the former VP of Nat Sherman International, and Brendan was the CFO. Uh, so they didn't acquire the Nat Sherman name, but they acquired all the lines. Um, that, mm -hmm. So including uh, the the Timeless, which I think is one of the most popular ones that Nat Sherman had, and Epoca, that's another one. So they're, call, uh, they're releasing a new company. They're launching a new company called, oh, I hope I got this right, Ferio Tego. LLC for Rio Tego LLC is the name of the company. Uh, so they'll be selling the various brands under that name. 
Uh, what else? So they're going to be relaunching the facings as early as this summer. So that, that's when they're going to be releasing some of the new... Right before PCA. <laughs> like everyone else, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad you, you, you brought this up because you brought this up when they were closing. And oh, last year, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, for, for you Story Geeks listeners, episode 340, something or other, right? Um, and, you know, I was kind of on, but kind of off on this, right? First thing I said was, okay, those sticks from that Sherman, they're not going anywhere. Somebody will pick them up. That is, that is a line that was just super old school, stagnant. People smoked them, clearly. People enjoyed them. You know, uh, you didn't need a Nat Sherman. They had a following. They, they had a following. The Timeless is an incredible stick. They make some other sticks there. They're online. They're, they're in retailers. Uh, most of the retailers have at least six or seven or eight facings of Nat Sherman. The brand wasn't going anywhere. Maybe the brand name of a Nat Sherman, but those blends I knew. I thought that, so I knew that they weren't going anywhere, and I knew that they were not going to be gone for long. I had that correct. What I didn't have correct was I said either my father or Oliva, who needs a shot in the arm, uh, <laughs> will buy them, right? Because I figured, because, because, and, and, and here's my rationality my father just got the Fonseca line, they might be in buying mode. Hey! Let's buy this company. Let's see what's happened. That was my rationality there. My other rationality was um, uh, Oliva, who hasn't done anything since 2012, right? They're just still living off the Milanio, right? And, and, and it's like, you know, um, they might pick them up too because I could see the timeless fitting in that Oliva profile. Portfo yeah, their right? portfolio. The, 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 the portfolio, thank you, uh, right? And whatnot. I but, that I but I knew that that, that like, that was not going away. They're, they're, they're a staple company, like an Arturo Fluente, in all retailers. They just needed a little bit of, of, of freshness and a little bit of, you know, you it's like a, ga a car with gas. You know what I mean? If it's if it's if the re if the gas lights on, you gotta fill it up with some more stuff. And I think um, I did not see internally. What is it? Uh, uh, well, so it's basically private investors. Really, is what it is. Yeah, right? I did not see like like I would have never guessed that it would go to Mr. Herlots right uh, there and in and internally. But it kind of makes sense. Like it makes it, it makes, makes sense. sense because uh, he take care of the brand for many many years. Right. And I think uh, definitely he's the one know everything behind all the Natureman brand. And my 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 opinion is I think going great hands. Oh, for and sure. I believe he gonna know exactly what he do for next step. He always think outside of the box, and um, for him, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Now uh, he's gonna he gonna just implement a little bit more fresh eye in everything, and he gonna move forward. And I know he's gonna be great because he not Sherman is not Sherman because all Michael Hello hard work. Yes, uh, and I think. It's in perfect hands. Yes, and I I'm, really, I'm, I'm very proud. Like I'm, like I, I love him. He working so hard. He always are very kind with me. He helped me a lot when I need any recommendation when I'm a star, and I'm glad for him. It's it's great. Yeah. And now I love the idea to I gonna see you in this side. Yo, yeah, yeah. Right. That, that and brand. now you you're gonna be the face, 100 percent the face of your company, right. your name, the new name. Right. With the same great blends, plus I know for sure he's gonna make new blends. Of course he, he is, right? right. Put right. bigger the, the the portfolio. It's it's great for him, for sure. Yep, yep. And, and I'm actually interested and seeing what they come up with. Like, it's one thing to take the blends and do that there, but then it's like, okay, when the dust settles, you have your show, whatever version of the show is, virtual, not virtual, whichever, but you go through 2021, you know, uh, the summer, and, 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 and you round out Q3, Q4, and you go six months, and you get the Nat Sherman back up and running, and then you introduce the blend, people are going to be like, I got to try it. 
Like I gotta yes. try it. Like you because the, now now you're gonna <laughs> just really see the cigar one hundred percent right with right. his name from the beginning. Right. Like and now he have to promote his own blend one hundred percent own cigar with a new label. Yeah. Uh, it's not like ah everybody knows that one. Now I'm take care of that cigar. I just only put my label. Now I, I believe when he comes with a new blend. People want to be more excited to try for sure. Right. Absolutely, and plus, if you look at it, 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 you, 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 he's probably taken notes for decades of of if I were in control, I would produce X, and he's probably got. And I'm making this up. I never met. I never met him, right? But I wouldn't be surprised if he's got the next three, four years laid out already. Cause he, cause he kind of, he sat there. So it, it, for me, business wise, I'm like, oh, the, the, whatever he gets, um, I, I, I will. I'm not a stick chaser. I will make Nelson be the stick chaser, <laughs> and Nelson will go chase him and do that there. Yeah, and, and, that's and, for yeah, sure. yeah, I yeah. think that's cool. That's super cool. I, I agree with you. That's cool. All right, Nelson, couple more. Go for it. Well, you, you know what's interesting? I think this is a first. Is Leo the first guest co-host? Because I don't think we've ever discussed the news with a guest. You are, uh, you are correct, except for the ah. gentleman we just interviewed. He was like a uh, he oh was, Alec Bradley. No, 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 not Alec Bradley. The one before that, the the guy we interviewed. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. I hope Look. you remember my name in another show, huh? I, I honestly, <laughs> th- quite frankly, I don't know. You, you, you're up there you with say, this girl, the Kelly, the Kelly no, girl. What is she's interacting with us. You're up there with Noel Rojas, Jose Blanco, Ernesto Perez, uh, Christian Aroa. I will remember uh, your interview. This is one of my favorite my interviews, name? hands down. What? Leon, no, my name again. Oh, oh, your full name? Hold on, I gotta oh. switch. Hold on, hold on, where is the paper? Well, no, 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 I know your name, it's Leo, and I know it's Lenore. Leo, Leo, it's fine, I'm Leo, looking, no, cigar no, blonde, no, no, because, cigar. no, because in my notes I have a phonetically way you, to pronounce it. You spelled it out phonetically? Of course I did, and, and you I still can't I get still it? Gotta, dude, I boxed in college, I mean, uh, hold on, no, 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 it's, it's the Cigar Man Andy Johnny. I'm having three conversations. I got Johnny barking in my head, oh, cigar giving, man me, Andy. giving me the information I need. Nelson's trying to do it there. I'm trying to have a conversation <laughs> with Lenore. Hold on. Wait a minute. I'm having a bad 30 seconds. Hold on. <laughs> Two things. Number one, your name is pronounced Lenore Abrazadadel. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Number two. Nelson asked me, Nelson asked me, this is why people listen to Story Geeks, because they all try to play Stump Joe, right? Nelson asked me, is, is, is Lenore the first person to participate in news commentary? And the answer is, Cigar Vendor, yes, but Cigar Man Andy stuck around. This is a it, format Okay, that I don't remember doing. that, okay. Because normally we stick this in the sticks of the week, but if it's an interview that is a stick chaser... I usually let it go a little bit longer. I, I usually let it go longer, and then we just do one one segment as opposed to the two segments. That's the programming note. Johnny, thank you. Lenore, thank you. Nelson, thank you. Let's continue. So Lenore is the first cigar vendor to participate in news commentary. But it, it, it just works out in logistics of the show. Um because sometimes this is like a train on fire and goes well. And sometimes people are short-winded and interviews are 10 minutes. So I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now give us another piece of factoid, please. More news. Yes, thank you. Political tobacco fight gets a little help. The Tobacconist Association of America, also known as the TAA, has donated $50,000 to the PCA to help fund their state lobbying work, which we as cigar lovers all appreciate. TAA is obviously for the Stogie Geeks and Industry Association made up of around 80 cigar retailers. They basically pool together to leverage their power to increase, uh, improve industry standards and best practices, etc. The donation is uh, timely as the PCA obviously suffered a big blow last year by not having their annual trade show. That was a huge blow to them, I'm assuming, financially. they also had some layoffs last year, unfortunately, and uh, they did some reorganization in November and announced that Joshua Haberski, uh, who was promoted from Director of Federal Affairs to the Head of Government Affairs, 
hold on, I lost my train of thought. Haberski, oh, Haberski has a background in politics and lobbying, so this is a nice fit uh, for him. He gets a big thing because the TAA declared that this donation is specific to state lobbying. Yep. Right? Yep. So this is a big influx of cash for Haberski. Uh, he has a background in politics and lobbying, and hopefully the TAA donation will help them a lot with the lobbying in 2021. Wow. That's a real mouthful. That's a real mouthful. Couple things there. That's huge. Couple things there. First thing, let, let, let's talk about the, and you don't have to comment at all, but this is why people love Stogie Geeks, right? This is why people really love Stogie Geeks, right? COVID was a blessing for the PCA compared to what happened in 2019. It gave them a chance to reset because they needed a big reset as to the direction that they were going. Now, here's where the hate email comes in. Nelson at stogiegeeks.com is where it comes in. For those retailers in other Cigar Shop podcasts who get upset that I do, I talk about the PCA and I've never been on the PCA floor. I've never been on the PCA floor or IPCPR floor for one reason. That is a special relationship. The PCA, I know you're listening. Okay, that is a special relationship between you and the vendors, not podcast. We do this 365 days a year. We'll get the news in due time. That is a special relationship. And if they focus on this special relationship, they will then come together. Now, TAA is a great organization. Yep. And not for nothing, you have to have a level of um, a tier level from a cigar retailer, brick and mortar cigar shop owner to become part of that there. So you're getting, and, and it's volume based, it, there's an accreditation process, there's a whole process you have to go on, like being on a regular traditional board of directors for a, a high school or college or organization and whatnot, and, and that's how that PCA should be run. So I think it's a super cool um, thought that you brought up, super cool fact that you brought up, and I'm glad to see them working together because I think that in the industry they're both important and they're both needed, but PCA's definitely got their work cut out for them, and I'm sure that they will put everything in place for them to get organized and come back bigger, better, and stronger. Whether or not they can do it successfully with the vaccine and all of that this year. But if not, I, I recommend 2022. You're going to see a different, this is me predicting. I'm assuming that it's going to be virtual or they might wait till later, whichever. But uh, obviously the, the, the TAA meeting will, will be um, virtual because it's, it's, it's in the beginning of the year. But what's going to happen is in 2022, when hopefully the majority of us had vaccination, we've had herd immunity, we're no longer wearing masks, it's just a common thing that we got to get, and fast forward there, in a post-COVID era, I think the PCA is going to come back bigger and stronger, not as great as the, P as the TAA, but I think it's going to be a better version than it's 2018, 2019 there too. So that's that. I know you don't want to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Your I'm, lips I'm, are sealed. I'm glad. I'm glad everybody just tried to help each other mm -hmm. yeah. because that is going to make the industry more strong. For sure. Uh, and more together. Yes. They both that needed. Is my, my comments. And when I see and I write things like that, I'm I'm glad this thing happened. Yes. Because we show to everyone in different aspect. Everybody working together to try to support and working together for the industry. And I love that. Yep. I, and, 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 and had we not had COVID, PCA would have gone through a real hard times. There would have been more layoffs. There would have been a, a ill-attended show. And there would have been a boatload of political love or hate yeah, going back and forth. Because they were writing love letters. This is why my integrity got started going down the path. Because one of our sponsors for the show pulled out because... They said, you know, we do support the PCA and this and that. And they, you know, the company started writing love letters or hate letters to that organization. And COVID had them, like all of us, at our own level. It's a time for reflection. 
and it's a time for redirection. And maybe the universe yeah. needed it. Maybe, I'm just saying, maybe the universe needed it, not only for the premium cigar industry, well, yeah. but we, maybe we needed to hold our loved ones just a little bit closer. Yeah, everything, maybe. you know, I just keep saying, everything happened for a reason in life, in whatever aspect. Right, yes. Personal life, work life, industrious life, everything happened for a reason. If you have to take the best of the bad. And when we think in positive and we see this kind of $50,000 donator, like that is, wow, it's support. And maybe, uh, like you say, is the, the, the good part of COVID because we come more together. Yes. Before, uh, we are so focused in our own, and I talk like everyone, to build our own stuff, and we forgot about the rest of the people. Right, yes. right. If COVID, everybody come more together, the industry come more together. Now it's a very small line between consumer, retailers, owners, CEO, it's because every are on the same page. Like, now we take more time, and everybody takes time to just understand from where the another person come from. The another business, they show the another business problem. And, you know, keep thinking positive, like that, that is my personal opinion. And, and this thing happened for a reason. And it's, it's great. For me, it's great. Like for my, my prospect besides PCA, besides everything, it's like put people together to help to just continue uh, putting different positions in the cigar industry to just increase increase the the connection uh show to everyone you know are alone we here we can do something together uh and that is one of the things i'm sorry i know it's nothing to do with the pca but when all the uh, kobe star one of the things i personally do is make a phone call with all the retailers already have our line to make sure i don't want you to start with my product let me know what we can do let me know if you start with the product i can change for you we can do something together. We can do it wow. uh, Zoom together with your people to you can sell. That is my personal connection. And maybe before I never think like that. It's like, okay, I sell already your product. Let me know if you need something else. Now I want to help you to sell your product because right. you already buy my product. Right. It's, everything happened for a reason. The connection is totally different now. Yeah, yep. every industry now, it has to reassess. I mean, obviously, the cigar industry, but every industry is reassessing how they operate. And, like, what your example is a perfect example of that. You started thinking to yourself, all right, well, we got to operate differently now, right? It's just a different world. Uh, so I think from retailers to even factories had, had to, I mean, you guys have the Nova factory. I'm assuming you went through significant changes, too. Yeah. Tuning. It's, it, it, everything is a change. It's a personal touch, the human touch. Because when you have a, 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 when everything is nice, everybody's happy. But then you see the real faces <laughs> for the persons when we really are in trouble. Right, right. Um, Tune in next week. A lot. Tune in next week to Story Geeks as we have positive affirmation with Leo, Nelson, and Joe. <laughs> <laughs> right, we could do it. We could do a holistic healing show. It would be cool, <laughs> right? We could, uh, you know, because all Not you have, with me. <laughs> all you have to do is just be nice to someone, and you'll be you know, right that's on. A good, that's a good start. All right, Nelson has one more, and then we'll wrap up with the Floridians versus New Yorkers. I can't wait. Sure. Um, <laughs> admittedly, I've I've only had one of their cigars ever, but uh, there's some new leadership over at Mbacho Cigars. Um, Mbacho Cigars. Mbacho. Mbacho. That's what I said. Is oh, that I'm my sorry. Boston accent screwing up? Yeah, it was. But uh, that's okay. That's cool. Okay, don't talk about the accent. Please, I don't want to go to this point. Hey, you know what? I get that too, believe it or not. Coming from Boston, I get a lot of shit for my accent. Uh, Mombacho Cigars, founded in 2006, is now under new leadership. Uh, Cam Heaps, who was actually a co-founder of the company, is now stepping up and replacing Claudio Scroy. I'm probably butchering his last name. That's okay. Uh, as president of Mombacho... <laughs> Claudio's been serving, uh, he had been serving his dual role. He was both the master blender and president of Mombacho Cigars. So now uh, Cam Heaps is going to be stepping in. The company's best known for Mombacho Diplomatico. That's the one I've actually had. And Liga Maestro Cigars. Uh, so we wish Cam and his company the best of luck in his new role. Yeah, I think that um, from a PR perspective, they got a lot of work to do. Um it's it's a it's a it's a very sensitive subject um there uh i would spare leo the details 
of that if 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 they're like i do not want to talk about this subject with any uh vendor on now that being said you know i have to say something right <laughs> <laughs> that being said she just but, rolled that her is, okay that is the time again i just but no 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 can i can i invite you to uh to save this news article because because this this is something you want to bring it up next week no i want to bring it up in the sticks of the week when there's no guest on there because okay. it's, it's a it's a very <laughs> i know you're welcome right it, it's, a, it's a very it's a very it's a very it's a very uh touchy subject i have plenty to say but i think that um it, it, that they did a it, they have a lot of um band-aids to fix and like i've had brokers call me up and say like i dumped their line because of what happened oh wow like it was a very difficult situation and it was what it was and we will talk about it but i i just i don't want to put any story geeks guest who takes time out of their busy schedule to even talk about a subject like this it just it it it, it needs to be shelved but nelson shelf it Phenomenal job on the news this week. That means a lot coming from Joe. It trust does. Me. If you listen, if you've been listening to the uh, past couple episodes, I've been giving him some crap about his news. So <laughs> you know what I mean. But that's okay. We're all I'm going to leave together. right now. We're all, <laughs> coming, we're, we're all coming together. So so j- just make a note to shelf it. And you know how I'm scatterbrained, Joe. Next time we nah, do we'll sticks bring of the week, up. we'll bring it up. We'll 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 bring that up. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for, you've had the experience to work in New York. And then you've had the experience to work in Boca Raton, which is like Mars and Venus, I'm sure. <laughs> so let's have a little fun for a couple of minutes to talk about the differences in the consumer, the differences in the people, the differences in maybe the cigar, the, the cigar profile, and then we'll wrap up the show. Okay, now, um, okay, New York, crazy city. I love New York. I live in New York 20 years. Uh, the clientele and the cigar shop in New York is the kind of people say like, I know what I want. Don't lose my time. Oh. <laughs> Give it to me now. <laughs> but the problem is when he comes to me, I say, hold on. You're not going to lose your time, but you have to take time. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Uh, but my surprise when I moved from New York to Boca, uh, everybody thinks Florida is, you know, just relax, peace and love. Now, I have to just put like a break in the way for I'm talk, uh, and everybody's more calm, have time for everything. But especially in Boca, I can say 80% of the people moved to Boca are from New York City. That is a bless for me because now if somebody wants to try to be funny, I say, hold on. Maybe I don't have the New York accent, but I know what it means. New York. Uh, but no, it's uh, the, the difference between New York and Boca for me. From if I talk about the cigar business, is the weather. That's it. Yep. Because the rest, I I feel at home here, and I'm the kind of person I can move to Boca, I can move to Boston, I can move for to another uh, Tennessee, and I put myself comfort because again. I want to listen more and I want to understand from where the people come from. And then I'm okay, Leo, just put the break, talk a little bit different, be more patient. I'm, I'm okay with that. People are nicer in Boca. And I really think it's weather related because a day like today that it's six degrees, right? Like, I'm like freaking like. Pfft. Why the hell I do I even that. live here? It's cold right. here today. It, it's a cold day today, right? I'm like, why do I even live here? Like, why don't I move to Boca? <laughs> no, but, like, you know, I love New York. I love New York. I love the snow, the dirty street two days later because <laughs> it's part of live on the big city. But on the same time, uh, Florida is like, in this time of my life, I just see myself more in Florida. Just calm down, relax. The cigars are different in this weather because, you know, rush is not too cold. You don't have to. It's it's okay. I, I love Florida. Yeah, me too. You know what I have to do at my house? I have a tent set up in my garage up the near smoke. the garage door so I can smoke with a heater in there because <laughs> it's too damn cold. You can't go outside. Uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> crazy. And my wife would kill me if I smoked in the garage, so I need a covering of some sort. 
I just go to a cigar shop. I have keys to retail cigar shops. This is a true story. He um, does. <laughs> I have keys to retail cigar shops, so I never have that. If it's too cold, I go over there with after hours or whatever. And, and do that. <laughs> that, that, that's one of the requirements I have if I smoke in your establishment. I need keys to the place. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. I need the key. And, and, and uh, you know, but, yeah, it's crazy. A, a couple, you know, and we're in mid January. We'll go through this through February, and then March starts to get warm, and we think, oh, we're gonna be golfing soon. And April is just horrendous. It's terrible. May is too cold. But even though it's warmer than what it was, it's still too cold. And then June comes, and then the summer's gone in like ninety days. It's, uh, I'm like, why are we here? Because what's <laughs> what's the weather where you got? What do you got? Eighty degrees? Uh, right now it's around seventy. Seventy. Oh. oh. That's shorts and sweatshirt, beautiful. rather, right? Like, shorts, the, sweatshirt. The, the good thing sweatshirt. about live in Florida and working on what you really love, you're feeling in vacation every day because you open the door and it's a beautiful sun outside, and it's you start uh, your day like with this energy, mm. like ah, I love the weather. I'm gonna work in my office. I'm gonna smoke cigar. I'm enjoy what I'm doing, and yeah, it's like more positive stuff. So that day one. That's it. I'm moving. Yeah, thanks, Leo. That was great. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Leo. Uh, okay, you are welcome to come to Florida, please. I don't, I don't know if you're going to give you the key of my office, but you can come and smoke well, with me Leo. anytime. That's okay. I'll, I'll I'll come by the during business hours for sure. <laughs> when we can travel again, I know I, I do do oh, a yeah. circuit. That is another thing for for there and all that stuff. So um, stay on the line when we wrap up the show. Just j- just stay on because then we'll we'll connect off here and all of that stuff. Leo, I want to thank you for your time for coming on Stogie Geeks. Uh, looking forward to those. Uh, new blends that are coming out and all of that stuff we're, 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 <laughs> thank you for, for for having us be able to to hear your story and i wish you all the success um thank you. I'm, I'm excited to uh go through your portfolio even though i can't get the leo x but uh you know at least go through your portfolio oh, yeah. and begin <laughs> and begin the actual journey nelson thank you uh, as always, for our parent in studio. Always oh, pleasure, Leo. Thank you so much for being on. Honestly, it was, it was a big pleasure for me to have you on. So this was great. Yep, Nelson, the stick chaser, is responsible for this interview. Stogie geeks, Nelson, <laughs> phenomenal job on the interview. Phenomenal job on the news. Uh, you, 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 this I'm is not your, fired. This is your best day. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm is, not fired. Just this wait, is your, wait. I'm gonna be. <laughs> this is your best day yet at Stogie Geeks, I, and I do mean that. You're doing very well. Thank you very much, Stogie Geeks. I want to remind you: we keep the conversation going all week long. Go to StogieGeeks.com. Email all of your email to Nelson at StogieGeeks.com. Especially if it's hate email, have it go over there. <laughs> Stogie Geeks. I want to remind you: but tying every cigar, there's a story worth knowing. Get out there, shop local, be with your friends, wear your mask. Stay safe. Until next time, peace.